What's going on? What's going on? I am super glad that you are here. Listen, it's Friday night and um, we're here with Man Work. Uh, tonight, we've got a pretty good broadcast for you. So I'm hoping that as you come in, as you see us, go ahead and start tagging some of your friends, some of your uh, family members. Go ahead and start tagging people and uh, sharing this broadcast because tonight, uh, I got someone very special, someone very dope that's going to be um, speaking and discussing uh, on a very, very serious uh, topic tonight as it pertains to men. So I'm super glad that you decided to go ahead and check in. Go ahead and share this broadcast. For many of you guys who do not know me, I'm Kenyon R. Dudley, and I am the creator and the founder of the uh, Man Work Network. And so we have a group of almost 100 men. We are almost 100 men strong right now. Um, and what we do is we actually... Uh, bond over uh, discussions and topics of faith, family. We talk about finances. We talk about um, what else we talk about. We talk about wealth and health. We talk about all types of things that pertains and uh, re is re in regards to men. And so, you know, I, I started this maybe about three weeks ago. I actually opened up this uh, network for men because like many of you know, we are in the midst of uh, still a pandemic. We're in the midst of some trying times. And uh, I really, really, really believe that like never before, men of all cultures, of all race, of all backgrounds, we need a place to come together, to connect to the source, right? To connect to God and to connect to one another because I still believe that there is a great work for all of us to do in this time and in this season. Um, but there are many men that are struggling right now. They're dealing with uh, mental situations. They're dealing with family situations. They're trying to figure out how to up and, and increase and scale up their money. They're trying to figure out what their purpose is. Uh, and a lot of men uh, lately have been secretly dealing with uh, depression and all types of anxieties and things like that. But guess what? Still needing to lead homes, still needing to go to work, still needing to make the money, right? Because the culture, uh, really the American culture, uh, doesn't allow the man to feel for the most part, doesn't allow the man to really uh, be able to get in touch with who they are and what God wants them to be. And so Man Work Network is a place where men can come and be a part of a safe environment, a safe culture. And we build one another up through discussion. We build one another up through prayer, through the word of God and practical things. We're talking about how you can uh, scale up your business, scale up your money and all of those things. And so if you are a man and you are not a part of the Man Work Network, we are almost 100 strong. We still got space for you. You got to go on over there on Facebook and find it. Just type in Man Work and you will find our network. Uh, brothers, we're getting together. All races, all ages, we're getting together. We're connecting um, with one another and we're being better uh, in this time. So listen, I've got a good broadcast, a good show for you tonight. Today, what we uh, is what we normally call in the Man Work Network, um, uh, the Friday highlight, okay? And it's like a part of our freestyle Friday type of thing where I choose, I'm, I'm praying and I'm choosing certain men from our network to highlight. They're doing some amazing things. We've got some authors, we've got some business owners, we've got some pastors, we've got some, uh, you know, evangelists, we've got all type of people. We've got some construction workers. We've got folks who can build your house, right? We've got all types of people. And I want to take the opportunity while we're connecting. I want to take the opportunity to highlight some of these men uh, so that you can get a chance to know them and get in on the mind of men. So tonight is not just for uh, men to view, 
but it is for women. I hope that you are sharing this broadcast because we're going to talk about something very, very important. But before I reveal to you what my topic is, I'm going to go ahead and bring our guest on. He's a brother of mine. Listen, we go way back. Now, I know you hear a lot of broadcasters and people say that a lot, but when I tell you, we go way back. We go way back, and you'll probably hear some of that in our discussion on tonight. And so he is a pastor. He's an activist. He's a renowned, listen, I'm going to say it. He's a renowned author, and we're going to be talking about his book that he wrote tonight. And he is my friend, and he is my brother. I'm going to bring on none other than the Raymond Forte. Come on, man. What's up? What's up? What's up? You good, brother. I, I'm so glad that you are with us on tonight. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you, sir? I'm good. Listen, if 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 I feel if if it looks like I'm like at 100 right now, <laughs> that's because I am. I know. Um, I was telling you in the green room as we were waiting to go uh, live. I was like, look, I've been waiting on this conversation all night. I've been waiting on this conversation all day. And so I'm super glad to have you uh, here with us on uh, the Man Work Network as we kind of talk about this topic on tonight. Um, listen, you guys got to go ahead and tag. I see some of you on right now. Tag it up. Go ahead and share, share, share. I'm a bro. I'm on all three of uh, my uh, platforms. I'm on my personal page. I'm on my public figure page and I'm going live right now over in the man work group. Um, and so I want everybody to share this message because I believe tonight is the night that you're going to get a chance to hear um, what it means to be a man and, and really fight for uh, your mental stability. So um, again, to everybody, welcome to man work talks. That's what I'm calling it, Raymond. I'm calling it man work talks because we're going to talk tonight. All right. Let's talk. I'm ready to talk about it. Let's, let's do it. talk. Listen, let's do some man work. How about that? Yes, sir. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So tonight's topic, tonight's topic, we're talking about maximizing mentally. OK, now I'm going to let you really dive into that in just a moment. All right. But I've got to build some credibility for our Please. viewers. OK, so I'm going to throw this on you. We got to play a quick little game. You up for a game? I'm ready. I'm up for it. Let's do it. All right. Listen, so this game is called Guess Who? All right. Okay. So I want our viewers to know a little bit more about you. I gave my opening spiel about who you are, um, but nobody can tell us who you are better than you can. Right. 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 So I'm going to play this game with you. Now, here's how it goes, bro. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. And then this is what I want you to do. In 30 seconds, I need you to answer the questions. 30 seconds. You only get 30 seconds each, okay? So right. I, know, I know you like to think a lot, <laughs> but you got you to gotta fire them off, okay? And All that right. give our audience a chance to know who you are and who they're listening into so that they can trust what uh, God is about to speak through you on tonight. You ready? You ready? I'm ready. All right, look, let me get my little, my little game music on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, so, <laughs> look, I had to do it up, okay? First question, you ready? I'm ready. In 30 seconds, who is Raymond Forte? A, 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 a story in process. Dope, I love that, a story in process. Okay, all right, second question. 30 seconds. Tell us what are some of your hobbies? What are some of the hobbies of Raymond Forte? Reading, um, watching ESPN. Um, whoo, that's it. <laughs> oh, I'm, a sport, I'm, a, I'm a sports guy. Uh, I love playing, I love recording music. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. I was gonna say, man, hold on, wait a minute. You got you like the music guru. What, what, what's up yeah. with the music? Yeah, right. yeah, you know, that's outside of that, you know, I'm just real chill. Like, I love reading and love watching sports. You and me both, brother. I'm a, I'm a reader for life. I mean, I love it. I love it. Okay, so last question. Here we go. Number three in 30 seconds. Tell us if Raymond Forte had a chance to be president, 
what would be his first initiative? Woo. Um, changing voting laws. Changing voting laws. And look, bro, that's really good because we're going to get into that. You're doing some phenomenal work out where you are in Arizona. All right, y'all, y'all give it up. Give it up for <laughs> the one and only the Raymond Forte. Bro, thank you for playing my little game with me. I just wanted to get, you know, the, the, the icebreaker in there. I wanted to make sure that we're ready to go um, and that the people will understand who you really are because you're about to talk about some some something heavy. Um, and we're definitely going to hit up that information that you just brought up as far as the voter rights, uh, because you're doing something that's very, very important out there in Arizona where you're living at um, right now. So let's talk man talk. Yes, sir. All right. First things first, you wrote a book. It was called Maximizing Mentally. Tell us what Maximizing Mentally is, the book, and then tell us what Maximizing Mentally means to you. All right. If y'all see a little hand, that's my son. What's <laughs> up? Yes. Your, look, the new father. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So so he's he's trying to, he's 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 in on the conversation. That's all about um, being a man, right? Right, right. Um, so Maximizing Mentally is a, is a kind of like a memoir of, some uh of, of of some things that I went through during my childhood. I mean it stresses the importance of how it, it stresses the importance of why men need to heal um mm -hmm. from whatever from whatever it is that traumatized us because it can spill into it can affect uh, our, our personal life it can it can affect our professional life it can affect our social life <clears throat> and it can affect the things of people around us. So I share some of the things that I went through uh, as a child and what I did as an adult, um, as a result of that trauma, you know, some of the things that, some of the dysfunctions that I, uh, dysfunctional activity that I uh, participated in. So mm -hmm. talk about the importance of healing so that uh, that does not affect your personal life and so your personal life, your professional life, and then you can be your best self for everybody around you. Right. Right. I mean, this particular book that you wrote, and now remind me again, has it been two years? Has it been a year, two years? Uh, April 1st would be two years. Dude, I feel like you just wrote the book. I feel yeah, like you just got out of boot camp. <laughs> right. Because, okay, so explain to the viewers what, that's, what that process was all about. Um, you, you started writing this book in a book boot camp. Tell, yes. tell the viewers how that process came about. All right, so um, well, let's just go back. It really started from a Facebook post. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, Apostle Apostle uh, Dudley saw it, and he said, "This is a this is a book idea. You need yeah. to write a book." And I and I said, "Listen, I don't know the first thing about writing the book. <laughs> I, I I I tried it. I don't know." He said, "Listen, man. He said, I'll do whatever I can to right. to, to." And I and when I say I, that's what I mean by being forever indebted to you, I mean forever indebted to you for that. So let me just share that publicly. I, I appreciate you for for giving me this for giving me the opportunity. So I really appreciate that. So um, he invited me to the uh, him and his wife invited me to uh, their book book writing boot camp. Mm -hmm. um, and for seven days, uh, we wrote uh, me and six other writers wrote for thirty minutes uh, a day. And uh, what I appreciate about Pastor Jasmine is she, she really got us to really dig deep, to mm -hmm. really go to the place, go point to the place of that pain so that you can find purpose in it. And so that's where a lot of the application in my book came in, is really finding the, uh, going to the point of pain so that I can be able to uh, articulate the purpose behind it. And so uh, that's what I really appreciate about Pastor Jasmine. Uh, and, and what she did for us and through us. So uh, we all wrote for about a week, and then it was an eight month editing process, publishing process. And um, April first, twenty twenty, was when maximizing the world is. Man, and I couldn't be more proud of you. Now, I, you know, for me, I don't. You say you're forever indebted. Listen, as that's got to be a figure of speech because it's God. It's God that really brought you to this place. I was just used, man, to say, look, you you got a story. 
and it's worth telling. I mean, let's talk about that, though, because how many people, um, men really, how many men uh, have a story, have um, a testimony of things that they've endured and come through, but don't even feel like they have something worth saying? I mean, I, I, how how is that, you know, from your end? Because you're a pastor. You, you've been in the, the ministry game for a long time. Is that is that something that you see a lot of men struggling with that, you know, they do have a story, they do have a voice, they have something to say, but they don't feel like um, it's worth saying or talking about? Absolutely. I mean, it happens all the time because um, it, many times they're dismissed. Um, and, and sometimes their, their, their side is not considered, um, mm -hmm. and not their, their trauma is not considered because, you know, a, a lot of, a, a, a lot of us in our culture expect perfect, especially out of black men expect perfection. And mm -hmm. I feel like I've been guilty to that, even with my own father, just forgiving him because he felt, you know, he responded to his own trauma, which you know which which affected me and i had to forgive him because he didn't have the resources right to deal with it then as we do now um so so that's that that really helped me in my forgive my forgiveness process with my father um but you know had i i believe had he had an outlet or had he had something that really tells his story mm -hmm. you know who knows what the trajectory of his life would have been um and so i think about other men who don't have that outlet to tell their story and they're just dismissed. And so they, you know, they just, they, they, they uh, express it in other ways that are destructive. Um, That's what, yeah. You know, and, and sometimes like I, I heard a quote and I'm, a, I'm paraphrasing it, but you know, if the boy, uh, if, if he's hurt, uh, you know, he's going to be hurt. He's, 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 he's going to burn the village. Right. Yeah. Uh, in, in in order to be heard, you know, and so we have to allow our boys and our men to really tell their story so that they're not heard in destructive ways. I, that 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 struck me. And and Joshua's on. What's going on, man? Uh, he is a writer as well, and he's a part of the Man Work Network. And as you were talking about this, I was thinking about him, and I was thinking about other male writers that I know. Um, and and is I'm gonna be honest with you is not very many male writers that I know personally. Now, I know that's kind of crazy to say, or it sounds, you know, funny to say, um, because, you know, my wife and I, we're publishers. So mm -hmm. that's part of what we do for a living. Mm -hmm. We publish books. Mm -hmm. But can I tell you, the majority of our clientele so far, and I'm hoping that tonight um, kind of help shift the trajectory of that thing, but the majority right now are women mm. who write um, and they tell their stories and they're they're quick. What's going on, Josh? Uh, they, they're quick to to tell what they've come through or how God is, you know, made a way or, you know, I mean, me and you, we were raised up in that same type of culture right back here in Georgia where, you know, our mothers are. They were the quickest ones to say, hallelujah. God is good. Right. right. They have the dominant voice. Yes. You know, yes. so they have the they have the they have a dominant voice in the in the and I guess the social permission to tell their story. Right, right. The so but, man, hold on, wait, wait, woo, wait a minute. The social permission to tell their stories. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about that. What are some of the 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 social limitations that you've seen uh, that are placed on men when it comes to their voice? Well, it, it it seems as if they can't talk about their trauma. Is it we, we actually it's it's like encouraged. We got to get over it. Yeah, we have to get over our trauma. So we really can't talk about our trauma um, because it, so so we hold it in and right. because because people already don't want to you know m most of the people around us don't want to listen to want to listen to the traumas that you know boys have gone through whether it was abuse from you know a family member mm -hmm. or you know something the teacher said to him or, or things like that it's like <clears throat> we don't really have the permission to really talk about what it is because it's like okay man up get over it right i mean for me when you when you talk about that i even as a father i've had to catch myself 
right? When it comes to my son. Um, and there are times where he has his moments as any human being will, right? He has his moments. Um, you know, he's not liking something, something has hurt him or whatever the case may be. Uh, and, you know, I've had to catch myself from saying, you know, be quiet. Don't don't stop crying. You know, and, and so when you're talking about the social intolerance. Right. Of men, especially. And now we've got all types of men in man work. Right. We got white men. We got black men. But listen, especially in the African-American community, mm -hmm. um, the social intolerance in our families. Um, where you see a little black boy crying and it's like, man, you're a wimp. You, mm -hmm. you, you're soft, you know, be quiet, suck it up, you know, those different types of things. And to a certain degree, that brings trauma on a guy. Right. Right. To a certain degree. Right. Right. Now we want our boys to be strong, but right. at the same time, we want to make sure that we don't put a barrier on their expression of emotion. As right. Fighters. Would you say? Would you say when 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 we're talking about trauma and 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 expressing what we've experienced, what we feel, and 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 what we're going through in the moment? Would you say there's a time limit on the expression uh, when it comes to men? Talk to me about that. There's a time. There is a time limit because you know, as men, we are called to be leaders, right? And so we can't lead expressing every emotion. Right. Uh, you know, if that makes sense. <laughs> <Right. laughs> like if we're if, if we're if we're men, if uh, if we're if we're upset, we got to be able to you know be be able to control that and be yeah. able to and be able to have patience, especially yeah. as fathers and as leaders, as pastors, mm -hmm. as we're managing people, as we're managing our lives. You know, we can't express every emotion, and that's where. And I talk about, you know, my father in book, he he expressed one time he was upset about something and he expressed his anger in a very destructive way, mm. which traumatized me for years. Mm -hmm. you know, and and so, you know, how we express our emotion uh, it is really key as we get older. And and so we, we want to give our boys the permission, but at the same time, but we want to make sure that we prepare them for the for the leadership role that they have ahead. I, I'm with you on that, bro. Th this is why I love your book so much, because um, I, I read the book, of course. <laughs> of course, we had to read it before we published it. Right? I, I read the book, you know, but but. Really seeing some of the things that you disclose in this book um, as a man, I'm like, whoa. Now, I know that, you know, I'm the type of guy I know how to express my thoughts. I know how to expect to express how I'm feeling in the moment and what I need to happen. Right. That's taken practice over time because I used to be a, a, a young boy who didn't. I felt like I didn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. um, and here I am sitting doing this type of stuff with you. Right. So it took practice. But I could only imagine the type of things that you experienced. Um, and that kind of snatching your voice at a young age, um, making you um, kind of closed off or, or traumatize you in, in a certain way. Let me ask this question. When it comes to um, your your father, do you think that there were, uh, were some traumas that he encountered that caused him to uh, bring this, you know, toxicity, if you will, into his parenting with you yes he was like he was well he had, his mother passed away when he was like four or five yeah um and then he was molested by his stepmother um, wow later on in his life okay and um he saw his father abuse his wife at uh, uh yeah he saw his father abuse his uh his stepmother yeah you know, Slapping her, you know, with, with you know physical abuse and whatnot, right. and so, and then also, so he was married. He was he was married three times. Okay. And so so he didn't really deal with some of the things that happened to him early on, and then of mm -hmm. course, like I said, in that time, late eighties, early nineties, weren't a lot of resources for black men. So 
there were a lot of trauma and then so he brought a lot of his toxicity and brought a lot of that to the marriage i mean to into his parenting you know name yeah. and whatnot because that's the only thing he knew. how how much how much um grace do you have to give her man a man um you know who's tr trying to process through their emotions trying to process through you know uh the mental i'm gonna go ahead and say it the mental instability that they're experiencing but that they, they can't really talk about how much grace do you give a man um who's acting out in other ways like you know domestic abuse or you know sexual promiscuity all these different type of things um that's a trick question. That is a very trick question because once a man, once you know that a man becomes aware, yeah, there's only so much grace that you can you can because he has to because some men aren't aware, right? And, and right. if they're not aware, okay, I, mm -hmm. I can give grace where you're you're not aware, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess speaking now that we're in 2022, mm -hmm. we have we have the resources in the tools. <laughs> so, right. and, you know, so at some point, especially if you have children, if you have people around you, right. you know, if you have a wife, you have children, if you, there's only so much grace, I guess, because it takes a lot, it takes a personal responsibility to want to change. Right, right. You know, and it's, and it, it's really up to you to really recognize it, be aware of it, and then and, and really do something right i get you i mean so listen some of you guys you're listening in right now this is raymond forte he is the author of maximizing mentally and uh we're talking about the mental state of men and how to overcome some traumas listen men go through some traumatic things too and i know that you know some people may be hearing that and saying okay well yeah that, that's a given but society it's it's almost like society has made it taboo to say that that men are going through things to have gone through things that have uh caused them to think the way that they think and so that's why i'm so excited about tonight's conversation with raymond forte listen if you got any questions for raymond i need you guys to go ahead and light up the comments i want you guys in on this conversation i made this conversation uh public we usually go um uh, live in our man work network group but i prayed on it i was like bro i gotta put this out here on the public pages because i want women in on this conversation as well so if you're listening in and you've got a question concerning men uh, and their mental state or men overcoming their traumas go ahead and put it over there in the comment section i'll be more than happy to ask the raymond forte listen and make sure that you're sharing this broadcast i see some of you guys on want you to share 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 get as many people in on this conversation as you possibly can all right so so raymond we're talking about the last thing that we talked about was how much grace do you give a guy who uh is clearly mentally unstable clearly dealing with some traumas um from their own past and it's spilling over into their marriage it's spilling over into their work it's spilling over into their parenting uh, and you gave your answer on that, but let's let's turn that dial just a little bit. Let's turn it. You, you personally, come on. Let's talk. Let's talk about that because you 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 put yourself out there in your book, right? Talk to me a little bit about some of the things that you began to do. All right, I know that you can trust you can trust me, and I trust you. That's why we're going here. Okay, oh, yeah. but talk to me a little bit about some of the things that you did that was an outcry right from mm -hmm. the trauma you experienced mm -hmm. so i mean just just i mean me it was a lot of what was sexual promiscuity You're um, right right you know my first wife you know cheating profusely lying mm -hmm. uh, not just you know to my wife but to people around me mm -hmm. you know even to my pastor to my to my friends um could I mean couldn't really keep a job <laughs> at the time, so I was unstable. Just I mean I was I mean it really was just the, it was the adultery and the lying. Okay. Okay. 
uh, it was it was it was that that really had an effect on everybody around me because then of course you know it affected my marriage with it, which then affected my friends you know right saw, you know friends saw that and distance themselves from me because of course while I can say I went through trauma <laughs> that it, it still it, it, it can still have an effect on a negative effect on the people around us, not just right. so yeah <laughs> so it mean, was, yeah it, it 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 happens there are there are so many men out there and, and let me just say this you know i dealt with pornography for years i mean years and mm. it was a direct outcry from some of the trauma that i had experienced as a child yeah. you know um and so that's that that question bringing it all the way back up to the question i asked about grace so knowing what you and I had to kind of push through and, and come through. How much grace, from your perspective, would you have wanted somebody to give you um, when they saw you in that particular state? Or, or do you still say, no, it's still up to me to have a come to Jesus and to make a decision, you know, to, to do better and to, and to grow from that? Um. Well, I, I, I'm more on the latter okay. because because gra a lot of grace was given to me. Ah, got it. And then I needed that moment where it it shut off, right? You know? And I needed that mo I needed that to really get my you know that to to have that come to Jesus moment, right? You know, so I think we're given a level of grace, but. We sometimes we can abuse it in the name of oh I went through trauma I went through things, okay yes you went through it, you know and this level of grace has been given to you but now what are you going to do about it? That's right. Personal accountability and responsibility comes in. So you had to come to Jesus. We all know that because you're here, right? And uh, <laughs> you're the author of Maximizing Mentally. That's what we're highlighting tonight. So you you had to come to Jesus briefly. Talk about how that change happened um you know because I, I know that there's a, a story behind that oh yeah so um really the major change I'm, the major moment for me was the ninth anniversary of my dad's death i had just lost my my job moving to yeah. phoenix and it was like a dream job for me and it was just a direct result of some some things and decisions that i made as a part mm -hmm. of the trauma that mm -hmm. i went through and um that day it was a monday and after losing that just realizing where i was i really cried and broke because i'm like okay i went went through all of this to go through this mm -hmm. that was like the definitive moment that really changed my life and changed okay. you know uh how i just how i looked at everything and yeah. so it was, it was like that it was like that reset for me okay yeah. i mean how many guys right now I'm, I'm just thinking about it as you're talking how many guys right now are at their defining moment mm. you know and i really do believe that this is a divine moment um whoever is looking in right now whoever is listening to this broadcast or whoever will catch the replay i really believe that there's some guy uh that's at a defining moment right now and they've got to make a decision to go with god Mm -hmm. um when you when you had your defining moment was it was it like a like a slap in the face or you know falling flat on your face or was it more so god just guiding you out of you know your past and bring and showing you a new light was it like a movie what was it <laughs> it was it was like that it was uh that the conversion from saul to paul <laughs> okay. Oh, so you, you uh, had to have a Damascus moment. I had a Damascus Road moment. Okay. I had, I had that moment where it was like, but but it was in that moment where the scales came off. And I yeah. was like, okay, I get it. I'm 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 getting it now. And mm -hmm. I and and I understood and it, yeah, it it was that it was that moment where I was like, okay, I, I get it and I need to I need to do something about this. Yeah. So that was that was that moment. And you did something all right, bro. You you out here, 
I mean, you writing books, you pastor in a church, you're an activist. And I use that word intentionally because you've actually um, started joining with other pastors out in Arizona, um, you know, in regards to voters. Right. Man, talk about that. Let's bring it on up. God has has brought you to a place of, of deliverance and freedom. And, and, and what is this life, man, where God has you out here really just rocking the streets for voters' rights? What's what's that about? Well, it's just, it was, like I said, a lot more clarity came from that, man. So um, as a result, as you mentioned, I wrote the book and then I'm pastoring a church, Ebenezer Church Phoenix. Um, our first service will be, our first virtual service will be on February 20th. And then wow. my inst installation service will be July 1st. 2022, which is my wow. eighth anniversary here in the Valley. Wow. Um, and uh, we have my installation preacher is Dr. Warren H. Stewart Sr., who on okay. that night, July 1st, he'll be celebrating his 45th anniversary in the Valley. So it's going to be a night of celebration, just yeah. God's goodness. Uh, but in regards to the voting rights, um, so we are petitioning the NFL uh, to move uh, the Super Bowl from Arizona to another location. Uh, because as a result of the 2020 election, uh, lawmakers here are making it very difficult uh, for people, uh, like people of color, people, uh, well, it's not just people of color, but uh, the disabled, people in rural areas, uh, they're making it, they're suppressing the right to vote. Um, right. So they're, you know, trying to eliminate absentee voting. They're trying to eliminate early voting. Um, they're also trying to uh, uh, eliminate, uh, they're trying to make, they're trying to just very, make it very restrictive for others to, to for, for people to vote. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're calling on the NFL to move the Super Bowl so that some of the laws can be changed, some of the voting laws can be changed and rectified. Um, and there's, like I said, voting suppression laws that, that are in effect right now that the Supreme Court ruled on last year. So okay. Very, 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 very serious matter. Um, and so <clears throat> we believe that in order for us to be heard, we're going to have to get them in the pocket. So the NFL, I mean, the Super Bowl is a, is a great economic resource. I mean, my first, year, my first year here in the Valley, 2015, the Super Bowl was here. So I okay. like the Super Bowl just like anybody else. But when you're making it, you're, when you're making it fun for others to vote, and when, you're, when you see a blatant injustice, you can't sit back and, and, and think about your own life. Right. Yeah. I mean, that that is a boss move. That is a man move. I mean, that's doing man work on a different level for, for real. And I commend mm -hmm. you for that. Um, I was actually trying to pull um, the uh, video uh, because you were actually on the news out there and everything, yeah. um, you know, talking about this very thing. And I was thinking about that, man, as you were talking, you know, it is very important that if we need something to be done in our area, in our community. It's very important that one of the first places you go to is the economics and you yes. really get them um, in a place and in a space that will grab their attention. And we all know that money brings um, a, a certain level of attention when you're, when you're hitting them in that place. And so, man, kudos yeah. to you for doing that. You know, I'm continuously praying for you, uh, you know, as you do it. And how can how can the people support this move? Is there something that they could do, some action that they could do? Also, you can uh, go to uh, ballot or blackout.com. That's ballot, uh, ballot or blackout.com to mm -hmm. sign the petition. Um, you can uh, to sign the petition for the NFL to uh, to move the Super Bowl. And then also you can call the NFL um at 212-450-2000 to demand they move the super bowl uh but again you can also go to ballot or blackout.com uh to sign the petition um letting the nfl know that uh, we want the super bowl moved from here man that's a big deal that's a I'm, big deal i'm the most hated man in arizona right now bro. i was about to say <laughs> that was gonna be my next question like how is the neighborhood in Arizona? Well, I'll, I'll say this. I've gotten some great support some, from some people here. I mean, you know, some from, from the local pastors or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but 
I'm looking on on Instagram and so, you know it's hit some of the Arizona ma major Arizona Instagram pages. Yeah. Woo! They tear me up. In the <laughs> but you know what? But 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 okay. All right. Watch how I tie this in. But what you come through has made you tough enough and ready for this right. level and this platform. Right. I mean, and I'm even seeing you know because I saw you know even 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 major like. Uh, I saw major church. I saw children of pastors of major churches saying, well, "We're not for this," and and I, and it, it, it almost broke my heart. But it's like, hey, you know, you right. got it. I've been made for this fight, you know, because you know this. When when you see blatant injustices, you either be silent or you be heard. And I think right. it's, it's time for us to be heard when you see when when justice is being done. Man, <laughs> the, that's why I say the Raymond Forte. I love your I love your website, by the way. Thank the you. Raymond Forte. Okay, because you out there um on the West Coast and you are doing some man work, pun intended. Um, you know, oh, me, yeah. I, I'm so sorry. Let me say this too. Uh go I ahead. just want to give a history lesson about Arizona. 30, Please. so we, we uh uh 30 years ago, um the NFL moved the Super Bowl from Arizona to California because 51% of voters mm -hmm. did not approve of the MLK holiday. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so it took it took the NFL to move the Super Bowl for them to recognize the MLK holiday. So, while you know we were, we were recognizing MLK in in Georgia around right. that time, there's but they're still they were still trying to fight. <laughs> to even recognize them as a holiday around that time, so it's like wow. we're seeing history repeat itself. Um, and uh, February 14th was the 110th anniversary of the state of Arizona, and we are still fighting voter rights. Voter oh rights. <laughs> 110 years later. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, twenty. Listen, I, I when I first heard the story, and I'm holding my head because this is literally what I did when I first heard of the story and what you were doing, what you were involved in. I was like. It's 2022. What? But you know what? We needed you when I was living out in L.A. <laughs> because <laughs> I, was, I was going to the university and doing my thing. And, bro, you're talking about a country boy from Georgia. You know, listen, I, January rolled around. What is it? January 15th? Yep, January 15th yep. rolled around. I'm, I'm ready to watch the commemorative um, service, you mm -hmm. know, and, and uh -huh. take my day off. And when I tell you <laughs> L.A. was living as normal, yep. like they were living as usual. They didn't really, you know, do that. School was still in session. I was like, no, no holiday. What is this? And so, you know, I'm, I'm really not as shocked. Um, well, I am shocked to, to, to hear that Arizona is still going through it, um, yeah. you know, but it's still out there. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, th there's work to be done. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm here to work, and that's what I believe God called me to Arizona, not for just the pastoral work with this, but for the for the social justice work here uh, that needs to be done. So um, I'm 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 here, and I'm I'm on assignment. Yeah, indeed. Listen, I hope every brother that's listening in um, is encouraged tonight uh, to do their own level of man work. God has given you your own platform. He's given you your own gift and 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 grace and anointing and uh, voice. And so I love how Raymond has turned his trauma, turned his pain into purpose. Um, and he's out there really using his voice um, in ways that, honestly, his son and the generations to come are going to benefit from uh, mm -hmm. just because he dared to speak up. So I, I encourage you guys who are listening in to speak up uh, in your own sphere of influence and in your own area all right uh so listen we're coming down to this hour bro i gotta wrap it up but this is how i want to wrap it up all right i want to i want to i want to do what we call a wrap-up session um and i'm trying this out on you because i know that you know you you'll be the one that that knock it out the park and uh show it how it's you know it need to be done when the other guys get on my live so if you had one minute to do a state of the union address regarding men's mental health. What would you say? And what would you say to the general public right now? The general public is listening in and they're listening 
into your voice, talk about men's mental health? What would you say? What do you want us to know? All in all, after tonight's conversation, what is it that you want us to leave with? The strength of the community is 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 founded on men's mental health. If our mm. mind is not right, then we're not right. We're not right as men. You know, as yep. a man think it in his heart, so is he. so is he. So, our our foundation, our strength, and our and the backbone really of our community comes from is really founded upon the, uh, the, the the mental health and the mental strength and fortitude of our men. Because when we're mentally strong and when we can mentally uh, get through life uh, in, a, in in a positive way, then um, our families and our communities are positively affected. Boom. Ah, boom. I, I, I truly, truly, truly believe that um, with all of my heart, which is one of the main reasons why I believe that God gave me you uh, to actually come on the live with me tonight um, and to just talk about this. Um, any, any other last thoughts concerning your book? Any other last thoughts? Um, you can purchase the book on Amazon <clears throat> or you can purchase it. You can get an autographed copy by going to uh, www.theraymondforte.com. And then you can per you can uh, contact me at Raymond at the Raymond Forte dot com. Subscribe. Um, it is uh, it is blessing men and women across the country. Um, it is in notable hands. And I uh, do believe I, I do believe that this book is a marathon, not a sprint. So this book is going to be continue to bless lives as uh, the years go by. So you want to go ahead and get your copy. Yo, I'm, I'm serious. Get your copy. I mean, what, <laughs> what are you waiting on? Get your copy tonight because and, and I encourage you to get multiple copies because you want it for yourself, bro. Whoever's listening in, watching in, you want it for yourself. Um, but you've got a friend, you got a brother, you got a cousin, you got a son, you got other men in your life that need this book as well. If you are a lady and you're listening into this, um, you've got a son, you've got a husband, you've got somebody in your life that you know can benefit from what we just talked about tonight. So again, go over to uh, theraymondforte.com. When you sent that over, bro, I was like, Come on, because anybody <laughs> would be Raymond Forte, but Raymond Forte. <laughs> I hey, think, man, it just hit. <laughs> it hit, and, and I love it. I love it. www.theraymondforte.com. You can also, if you want to reach out to his offices um, and talk to him a little bit more about this voter rights um, and all of the things that he's doing out there in Arizona, why don't you hit him up at Raymond at theraymondforte.com. I am so thrilled, dude, and you know this. I say this off camera uh, as often as I can because I'm sincere with it. I appreciate you, bro, for being such a good brother to me. I appreciate you for being a great man of God. I appreciate your integrity, and I know that there is more that God is going to do through you. So I just speak many, many blessings over you. And uh, we're going to be looking forward to hearing your voice, not just in Arizona, but in multiple different places, because this book is going viral. You said it's, it's not a, it's not a uh, what you say, a, it's not a marathon, it's a sprint. What is it? No, it's not it's a sprint, not a it's a marathon. It's a marathon, yep. Listen, but it, it I believe that this book is going to go viral, don't you? I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And I, I and again, it. it's all because of you, man. And I really, really, really thank you for your belief in me and my story, man. Well, look, I'm going I'm to give all that credit and glory over to God, lest he strike us both. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I am, I am, um, look, I am wise enough not to take his glory, but I do appreciate you um, for recognizing when a brother's just trying to be a brother, man. Amen. That's all, that's all um, I wanted to do. Listen, before we go, I, I think I got a few people still on my live. I'm going to uh, say this. The first person who comments, the first person who comments over in the comments and tell me the name of Raymond Forte's book, you will get a gift. Um, so I'm going to see if somebody will actually post. If not, if you catch the replay, uh, the very first person who comments and says um, the name of Raymond Forte's book you will be the winner. You can be a woman. You can be a man. Hey, if you're if you're a woman, though, if you win, 
then you, you, you need to go ahead and give this over to like your brother yeah, or jo you know, Josh somebody. was the winner. Josh, bro, all the way from Dallas, Texas. Listen, Josh is an amazing man, too. I got to hook y'all up. He's also a part of uh, the Man Work Network. Josh, you know what you just won, right? Hey, hey, look, I just felt like giving something away, right? I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you, look, this, this prophetic. I got it. I'm just gonna open it up. Look, we got it all wrapped up nice. And there, look, look, Josh, oh. you see, you see what's coming your way? The Lord is, you and then send me your shipping address too. I'll send you an autographed copy of my book. Come on, and you get a book, Josh. Dude, dude, he said, I'm clean. <laughs> I'm clean. <laughs> he said, oh, Lord, <laughs> you get a book, maximize it mentally, and you get your very own coach wallet, dude. You get your coach wallet uh, because I believe that God is about to bless you um, even the more financially. I love you. I love your family down there in Dallas, Texas. Next time I'm there, we got to go uh, to the Potter's house and we got to go and connect and, and have some chicken and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Josh. Make sure you go ahead and give me your address so I can send this over to you. Go ahead, Raymond. I saw you. I was going to say, I've been to Dallas, been through Dallas three times, and I've never been to a Sunday morning service at the Pollock Patters house. I have okay. to. That I have mm -hmm. to. We got, we got to. a plan. We got a plan. When we go, we went, me and uh, my wife, we went a um, couple of months ago, and uh, it was phenomenal. Loved it. Uh, however... We could not get to the Potter's house um, because we were busy at a conference doing some other things. And I was like, Lord, no, Lord. <laughs> this is, this is, I've been planning to go to Dallas and 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 I'm I'm in the look, I'm in the state where the bishop is. And, you know, right. we, we still I was in. there. I was driving through. I was driving from Phoenix to Alabama a few months ago. And I, it was on a Sunday morning, but they weren't open. And I was yeah. like, oh, I wanted, <laughs> they weren't open. And it was on a Sunday morning. I was, I was, I was sad, man. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, Josh, look, you, you still watching. Hopefully uh, you can, you can be a wonderful host to me <laughs> and brother Raymond. When we get down there to Dallas, show us a good time, man. And uh, then we want to go to church. We want to go right. We want to go to church before we get on the flight uh, back home. Raymond, thank you so much, dude, for thank your time. You. I know that you're a busy man, so I appreciate it. Thank no, I, thank thank you. I really appreciate you having me. This baby boy, he just fell down. <laughs> uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. And uh and I, and I, and I'm and I'm glad that you uh I'm glad you had me on tonight. And I'm glad to be here. Dude, so we got to get up. We'll, we'll, you know, we always checking in on one another. Listen, thank y'all so much for being here and being a part of Man Work. Tonight was our Friday highlight. And uh, how did we do? How did we do? I think we did amazing. This was our very first time actually going live in the public. Um, and so I hope that you enjoyed this conversation. Listen, I want to remind you, listen, I, I need to make sure I say this, for those men who want uh, professional virtual counseling help, you can get help and it's virtual. It's virtual. You ain't even got to go into an office. Why don't you go ahead and jot down bit.ly forward slash mental man work bit.ly forward slash mental man work and i'm telling you this will be something that you can uh benefit from also make sure make sure make sure that you purchase maximizing mentally at www.theraymondforte.com uh, and you can also reach out to his office if you want to connect with him or get him to come to your conference or come speak you can do that at raymond at Ra the raymond Forte com and you can always of course check me out Kenyon R. Dudley again I'm the host of this broadcast and I'm the creator of Man Work Network if you got some men that you know could benefit from this group go ahead and send them over to Man Work on Facebook and you can connect with me and all the other things that I've got going on www.thekenyondudley.com uh, alright and so Raymond, we thank you so much again for your time. We thank you so much again for what you uh, guys have 
um, uh, commented over in the, the comment section. Uh, Josh says we'll have to uh, get on that attendance list. Bro, come on, set it up, set it up, because we're coming to Dallas. We're coming to Dallas. To all of you who were uh, kicking it with us on tonight, I thank you so much for your time. God bless you. I pray nothing but blessings over you. And I pray that God will do the miraculous in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul, and that he will amplify your voice. This is Kenyon R. Dudley of Man Work. And tonight, we just did some man work. Y'all be easy. Check us in, Check us out on tomorrow. Check us out on tomorrow. I'm going back live again with Dr. Patrick Kozmax. We're going to be talking about men's health tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Love you.